Fair warning, this may have spoilers in it for pretty much anything in the Cosmere. I'm not going to be talking about anything too specific spoiler-wise, but also I'm not being careful and anything is on the table. So, you have been warned. So Atlantris was one of the first Cosmere novels I ever read. I was introduced to the Cosmere through the massive masterpiece that is The Way of Kings. And after I read that, I knew immediately I wanted to read everything. I wanted to know everything there was in the Cosmere. So I started reading and I figured I'd go back to the very first published piece and start from there. And let me tell you, I was actually kind of disappointed. So Brandon Sanderson has developed a lot as a writer from when he wrote Elantris to when he wrote Way of Kings. And he is still developing and his books now are better than they were in the past. That's just how writers are or should be. So when I got done reading Atlantris, I checked it as read on my list and I moved on. And I read the rest of Stormlight Archive, Mistborn, Era 1, Era 2, all the novellas, Warbreaker, got on Reddit, found 17th Shard, Brandon Spoiler Streams, you name it, I dove in and even reread a ton of the books, but I never reread Elantris. And now that we have Elantrian showing up in the major Cosmere crossover novels like The Lost Metal and Tress of the Emerald Sea, it's becoming more and more obvious that Elantrians are going to be major players in late stage Cosmere. So I world hopped over to Cell, reread Elantris looking for all the Cosmere related info I could get my hands on. And I rediscovered some stuff I had completely forgotten or overlooked the first time around. So as I was reading, I was taking notes and very early on in the novel, something really jumped out to me. Ambition was the one emotion Jadith would accept as readily as devotion. That's a little hint there. Easy to overlook if you haven't read the entire Cosmere, which at the time I read Lantris wasn't even published yet. So of course I missed that the first go around. And then later on we have Jadith rewards ambition, not arrogance. Again, going back and rereading it, it feels like he's hitting you over the head with it. But at the time, it was very, very subtle. And also, I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit. Common people serve the artists. The artist serves the graders. The graders serve the regrets. The regrets serve the gorns. The gorns serve the worn. And worn serve Jadith. So basically, that is the, the structure of one of the major religions in Elantris in the book. And when you take all that into account, the religion, how it's structured, how they worship, the specific traits that they reward, that all leads us to the conclusion that Cell is being attacked and trying to be taken over by the Shard Autonomy. Just like we've seen in the later book, The Lost Metal, where Autonomy was powering Trell and had the same organizational structure, same reward system. Obvious now, going back and rereading Elantris, but very easy to miss when, we, you know, of course, we didn't even know about Autonomy when Elantris was first published. We didn't know about hardly anything to do with the Cosmere. But looking back, very clear, very obvious, Autonomy is trying to take over Cell. And we also know from the Lost Metal that Cell is no longer reachable by the regular means of a perpendicularity, which in my mind leads me to believe that Autonomy was successful in overthrowing and taking over Cell. And I believe that Autonomy's in power now over that world. What implications that has, I don't know, but that's kind of what I'm piecing together here. Now moving on to what we know about Elantrians, which going into this, I knew very little about Elantrians and had forgotten pretty much everything I did know. Now they're becoming more important, I really want to know more about them. So fun fact that I discovered in rereading is that Elantrians really, really frowned upon and pretty much outlawed anything resembling combat. So they wouldn't allow fencing, you know, in their surrounding area that they were protecting. Like they didn't want any kind of combat, any kind of violence whatsoever. And for beings that are so powerful, that's just, you know, coming from Roshar and Skadril to see, you know, people that are like, no violence, it's different. It's different and it's different enough to be notable. And I'm also wondering if the Elantrians disdain for violence and combat 
made the shards that were there because there were previously two shards on sale that were shattered the lantrians not being a combative type of people make that easier i i don't know and we also got just a little bit about the lantrians religion so they were in the local area worshiped as gods but they did not apparently see themselves as gods because they had their own religion and worshiped their own things one of the things that we did find out about religion because of course in Atlantis there are no original Atlantrians. It's all just people not knowing anything, which is kind of frustrating. But the tidbit we do get about their religion is that their religious ceremonies, a lot of them require fresh water from a running source, some kind of river or stream or something like that. Why? We don't know. Was it something to do with the magic? Was it just a strictly religious and ceremonial practice? We don't know. We do know that their magic is location based and it's, you know, ingrained almost in the, the earth and the planet itself. So could it have something to do with the magic? Cause it's actually running water through the system in which they're pulling the power from again, more questions than answers here really, but they do have their own specific religion. And the most interesting thing I learned about Lantrians during this reread is that some of them were just innately more powerful than others. And it seems to be this was not a result of more training or more expertise in the door and the magic system. This was innate to the individual. So some people, they said, was just closer to the door, closer to the source of the magic and allowed them to be more powerful. And I feel like that's going to become very, very, very important later in the Cosmere when we have more Lantrians being more active, let's say, in the political scene, if you want to call it that. And Brandon Sanderson being Brandon Sanderson, there's, of course, a lot of different magic systems on sale, not just the Lantrian door magic where they write the symbols and make magic things happen but we're not really told a whole lot of information about these other magic systems the one we do get introduced to we don't even get a name for it but it's the people uh dakor the religion that they have access to this magic and it is a, a type of it's pretty dark bone blood type human sacrifice magic through the unknown means they have the ability to create pretty much super soldiers with hardened bones and super strength and super speed and they do this through the deaths of other people and then you can also have more specialized skills as well one of the warriors that we're introduced to has the resistance to elantrian magic as part of their bone magic in them they tell us that to gain that ability it took killing 50 people to fuel that magic so it's it's pretty dark and then also they're using human sacrifices to do transportation. So they're transferred from one continent to the other by killing a person and using them as quote unquote fuel. So yeah, a little scary there. But the idea that they can be resistant to Elantrian magic, I believe that's going to be very, very, very important if I know Brandon Sanderson will be a plot point to some point, will be a plot point at some point in the future, I can just see an Elantrian as powerful as they are having someone cornered and trapped and we just know it's over and then boom, they're actually resistant to that magic. So that's a card he can play later on that I had completely forgotten about and I feel like is pretty important. We also have some less scary <laughs> magic, uh, a less scary way to access magic. We have a character in Elantris named Shudin who through a combination of movements, kind of like, uh, was it Tai Chi they do? It's the, the movements and everything. I'll, that going through these specific set of movements, he can channel magic and become stronger and more powerful. Um, we just got a brief glimpse at that and then nothing else was said about it. So we don't know really anything about this. Now this is very similar in my head to what uh, Vasher and uh, Kaladin were doing in Shadesmar in, I forget which one, the Stormlight books, but one of those, 
where they were going through these practice movements and I'm wondering if that's not what they were practicing. In which, of course, it being a location-based magic wouldn't actually work anywhere else other than cell, in case, unless you had some kind of extension cord for it, which apparently is a thing. Read Mistborn Secret History if you're not sure what I'm talking about there. We also see a strange religious cult people pop up in cell, the, the mysteries as they're called, and they seem to be obsessed with uh, the moon and eclipses, and we, we don't know if they're actually doing anything magical or if they're just a bunch of crazy people, but we know they're infatuated with the moon and eclipses and also a little bit of sacrificing people as well. So knowing Brandon, it's probably something legitimate, but we don't know. So that could pop up again. And of course we have Sions in Elantris. And Sions are now becoming, I don't know, pretty common in Cosmere books. It seems like everyone's got one. Uh, they're great for communication. I mean, the cell reception is way better than anything you get with Verizon or AT&T. But I don't really know anything about them. And so I was really looking forward to rereading Elantris and getting some first-hand accounts of what are they, what can they do, what are their limits, etc., etc. And we get very little of that. The people in Atlantis don't know anything about them. They don't know how they were created, when they were created, what they can do, what they can't do. They're just basically pets <laughs> at that point, which is infuriating because they're obviously very powerful and we just don't know anything about them. But what I forgot completely until I reread Atlantis is we have Sions, of course, and everyone has those, but we also have the anti Sion, which is the, they're called Skaz or something like that. They're from the, the other shard that was on uh, Cell way back in the day. And they, they get one little mention and that's it. So we don't know really anything about them, but that one mention comes from Hoyd. <laughs> so Hoyd is talking to one of these about his failed attempt at becoming a Lantrian uh, during the book Elantris and apparently he has some kind of deal going on with them, what the stakes are, what the implications are, uh, especially now that he has achieved becoming an Elantrian. Don't know, but it's, it's gonna have some implications with that. Uh, also, we don't know if these anti-Seons pair up with people like Seons do. Seons have you know a person that they are uh, subservient to. We're not clear if the Seon that or this anti Sion that Hoyt is talking to is subservient to him, if he's that the master to it, or if he is more in a you know negotiation with it. We just don't have enough context to really tell and know. But Hoyt hasn't shown up with this thing in later books, so that could mean anything. So there you go, that's all the Cosmere related stuff I could find in Atlantis, and most of it I had completely forgot about until this reread. And as a side note, I found it actually a much more enjoyable book uh, on the second uh, read through. So if you haven't read it in a while, I suggest go back, give it another try. It's actually a really good book. But if you have any theories or if you have other Cosmere related stuff that you caught in your reads of Atlantis, let me know down in the comments. I want to talk about it. I want to come up with some theories. I want to, I want to know a lot more than I do. So let me know down in the comments. What do you think? Because I know some of you have read Elantris more times than I have. So now's your time to shine. But as anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, share, like, all that fun stuff. And I will see you in the next one.